up now. <laughs> there we go. Hang okay. On. Yeah, there Good we stuff. go. I've started. Every, I've got to record everything. You want you want video and everything. And it's my hair all right. Yeah, your hair's all right, but your glasses are a bit Eric Morecambe. Oh, they are. I like these. These are my Eric's. And I've got yeah. a wee bit of stubble going on today. I've given up. I've just given up, me. I, I, I've i stopped thinking about, you know, because nobody sees me. I don't have to shave. Apart well, I see you. But then yeah. again, I, you know, in, in, in reciprocity, in, in, re, in respect, I'm. Rep, 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 yeah. I've not had a shave either because I thought I'm only seeing you, whatever. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, right, so we'll get busy. Welcome, everybody, to uh, the podcast. Uh, we haven't mm. any music this week because uh, Stanton's what? You, what? It's your cassette players broke again, aren't it? Have you got all the yeah. tape all wound out of it and everything? Well, to be Is that... fair, I, I recorded Top of the Pops on Sunday. Um, <laughs> and I, didn't, I just it, it got wound around the spool. Oh, and kids, I, any kids listening? Uh, kids, <laughs> when we were small, when we was small, oh. we used to sit in front of the telly with an ITT video a cassette recorder and try and press record and play at the same time when YMCA came on. That was yeah. my first recording on tape, YMCA, off Top right. of the Pops with Richard Skinner. That's who it so, was. Um, you watched YMCA was your uh, favourite band at one stage, but yeah, me and Donald, me and Donald, big uh, big fans <laughs> of the Village People. <laughs> um, listen, let's just address the uh, the large elephant in the room. Uh, mm. It's gone to Scotland. Uh, Boris has gone to Scotland to save the union. I don't think that's a good idea in the sense that why would you send a divorcee off to Scotland mm. to save the union? He would be the last person you go. How do we <laughs> save this? How how do we save this, Boris? Uh, yeah, I, I think he's just trying to deflect away from uh, Liz Hurley's fur coat. I think that's what he's trying to do this week, because that's been in all the papers, hasn't it? The, the Liz Hurley fur coat. All right. Uh, so he's trying, to, he's trying to grab the attention back. Yeah, well, he's trying I to put it back on. I have seen this fur coat thing. What's that then? Is it a, is it an, well, she was... Is, she, it, she, is it, what's mm, a, is it that, like that woman last week? Is it like... Well, what, it, it's it's open. It's open, and she doesn't have any undergarments on. Wow. So that there, there's and it was rumoured that her son took the picture, which is a bit creepy. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's now she's now clarified that in saying that it was her mum that took the picture. Uh, so that's all right. She doesn't say why she took a picture of herself in flagrante with a fur coat. Um, but you Did know, I lived? think it was just to get in the papers. I thought she lived in New York. No, in Flagrante. Oh, right. So, is that like Spain or something? Is that? It's just off the coast of Cortez. Oh, lovely. All right. Oh, that's no, nice. Oh, I just. Where did that come from? Yeah. No, uh, I, I thought, don't know where Cortez I, is. <laughs> I thought fur was out of, uh, out of fashion. I thought that was a, a thing of the past. Well, I thought topless, topless pastry girls were out of fashion, but apparently Liz is trying to bring it back. But don't worry about Boris anyway, Ronnie. Why? Don't worry, because oh. he'll end up in Cornwall, won't he? Oh, he, he yeah. Won't, he yeah, won't be in Scotland. Yeah, he, he'll, 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 yeah, but he's, he's got lovely castles in Scotland. Uh, so he'll, he'll, he's probably had Dominic say, You must go to Stirling Castle, you must mm. go to Edinburgh Castle, and there's a lovely castle uh, down the uh, the west coast as well. Go there, go there and have a nice time at the castles. Uh, but, but, but Sturgeon's up in arms. She's saying, Oh, well, you shouldn't be coming up because it's not essential. I would have them up every five minutes. <laughs> you want independence, just but Boris with that bloody hero of his. He was how ridiculous. You remember Ken Dodd, by the way? Mm. I've got a story. Oh, tickle I am. How tickle I am. But before yeah. he used to go on stage, he used to fluff off his hair. Oh, by yeah. what a what a day for you know sticking your uh, pencil in the uh, letterbox and how's that for stand-up? But you know, <laughs> but you see, he would do that. And I think Boris is doing that before he comes out for, to announce a hundred thousand deaths, right? Yeah. His hair, he looks like he should have been brought in in a comedy what, a sort of clown car. What the hell's going on with that? I'll tell you what, he thinks that's the brand, and I can't comb my hair because mm. that's not the brand. I need to have the wild hair. I think it's it's part of his schooling. I blame his schooling, Ronnie. Oh, yeah, he went to Eton, didn't he? And I think he's been held upside down by his legs a lot in his life and his head rubbed on the carpet and dragged along and faggots inserted in various orifices. And I think, I think that's what happens even now, uh, behind the scenes in Downing Street, to make him feel at home, they tip him upside down by his ankles, rub his head on the floor and insert some faggots before he goes out for the big speeches. That's what goes on. You just brought me back there, a lovely other memory. You remember you used to rub... <laughs> A balloon on your chest to make it yeah. stick to your hair. You remember those days? 
<laughs> I do, my friend. Yeah. That was before game game gear and all that sort of stuff. We used to. Take- well, listen, listen. We we should be proud this week, us Scots and us Brits. We should be proud. We should be flying the flag of pride atop the castle of achievement as as Boris goes up to Scotland because we we should come together. We have much to celebrate, Ronnie, as English and Scots. Things that bind us together this week intrinsically as one. What? Uh, we uh, we have uh, we have won the award for getting drunk the most in the world, according to a new study. Yes. <laughs> oh, finally. Oh, why is that not bigger news? I don't know. Uh, Let me read for you. Uh, The two UK nations topped a league table, which asked how often people drink alcohol to the extent their physical and mental faculties are impaired. They lose their balance and slur their words. English and Scots said they felt this way 33 times a year. That's way above Spain, Italy, Portugal, Germany, Greece, Poland, and Hungary. Tremendous achievement when you think of the competition they're running. Tremendous. Oh, well, well done, because, uh, you know, this idea, the, you know, this whole thing, the French, uh, they, 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 they introduce wine to the kids when they're about three, and, you know, mm. and that way they learn how to kind of drink properly. No, we introduce butt fast in Scotland at three, <laughs> right? Because you're going to get bloated your whole life. And yeah. that way, the pandemic... It's not going to make that go any faster or anything. But to be fair, to be fair, I think I think for for us, you know, English and Scots to rise above the French, who are always taking two hours for lunch, aren't they, and a nice bottle of Burgundy. Then they go back to the lathes and take their fingers off. And then you've got the Germans, you know, drinking steins, you know, liters of beer before having a hundred weight of disgusting sausage. Uh, and then the Americans, of course, you know, a bit lightweight when it comes to getting smashed. Yeah. They're light beers and no pubs and too many drugs. You know, hopefully Joe Biden can inspire a sea change in American drinking habits. Hopefully take us on and get them back where they belong. You know, I'm looking to that. I'm looking for it. Mm. Um, uh, is there something wrong with Keir Starmer, do you reckon? Because, uh, you know, have you ever played a game of football now? A bad Sunday morning team that you play against and they're, they're rubbish. And you get the mm. ball in the box and you can just go wherever you like. Keir Stammer is that person who could score and he doesn't seem to want to get into the box. He's, you no. know, mm. Morris is mm. 100,000 and he just keeps on coming on with these little, because he's shielding at the moment, he keeps meeting people. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Maybe think on me. Uh, well, again, I, I blame schooling, Ronnie. That's what I blame. Because he's not been to the right school that showed him how to get into the box. Ah, if he'd been right. to Eton... He know how to get into the box. Believe you me. I wonder if he keeps pigs. No. Uh, I've got some new gigs. <laughs> right. Hey, there's one for the pie. Uh, I've got some new gigs for you as well. Um, uh, what? what? Well, you I'm know, busy. I'm busy already. I don't need new jobs. I'm busy. No, these are show business, mate. Oh, okay. These are, business. these are big money spinners, you know, and I'm your oh, I need a bit of that. I need a bit of that for my creative side of the head, which yeah. is, is it only it only gets this every week and it's not yeah. that creative. Um, here we go then. Uh, new gigs. You tell me what what you want me to chase up and we'll get to a deal. Canada's Please, foremost yeah. erectile dysfunction company want you to be <laughs> the face of the new product, Niagara Balls. <laughs> you interested? You will be the face <sighs> of Niagara Balls. Well, you know what, Ronnie? I've never been to Canada, and it's one of the places I want to go to uh, and tick off my bucket list. Uh, and while I'm there, I can go to Seattle, because it's not far away, is it? So, uh, Niagara Balls. Yeah, I'm up for that. Will, I, will my face appear on the balls? Yeah. They've got this kind of... Yeah. It enhances from below, because uh, the other stuff... Um, so, okay, I'll put that one in there. Um, I'm up for the balls. Walker's Chris have been big company. Walker Chris have been in touch. Uh, they want you to the face of a new bar snacks called Nut Sacks. And you buy <laughs> Nut Sacks over the bar and they're, they're done in the kind of nut uh, in the uh, the sack material. And it's like old fashioned. Yes. So you, you get your nuts in the sack like that and you eat your nut sack. You have your nuts at the bar. Nut Sacks. Interested? Walker's mate. Do, do they hang behind the bar? Yeah. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> yeah. The special display cabinet. <laughs> it looks like it looks like so it looks like about thirty old men have been castrated. <laughs> I don't know what you mean, but you know, you twist them and turn before you you don't just pull them down. Oh, you have to twist. So yeah, yeah okay. nut sacks. Not 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 interested in nut sacks to be honest, Ronnie. Thank uh, you. There's a theme developing here, but carry on. Devon's premier double cream company want you to be the face of the new product called Getting Jizzy with it. Um, what do you think? <laughs> 
Are you interested? Get uh, up. What, what was that? What, what would that entail? Is there is there an advertising campaign for that? I, is I is it, it billboards? Is it, is it cream? There'll be cream kind of, uh, you know, it'll be you kind of slow motion cream coming across your face, I think is the <laughs> idea. Would, would that be in the trip? Interesting. Well, if it, that might help my complexion if there's some some you know splatterings of slow motion cream across yeah. my uh, my chops. Uh, I, so I, I, I'm up. I have turned one down because I just don't think it's at this stage at the moment. Uh, you porn were in touch in touch with me. You porn and and yeah oh yeah yeah it's too early for you to go that road. You've got a couple. No, of years I don't need to get rid of any of my gear. I'm not desperate for money at the minute, so I'm uh, I'm okay. not I'm I'm not I'm not doing that. I, I like to keep my valuables. They've got a new film in production called Come Dancing, and um, I just wanted whether I just said no. I just said no, Paul. You don't, you I just, don't. I haven't got the feet for it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I just, I'm not on my toes like a lot of uh, young men of my I, age. I'm, I, I, I'm not light on my loafers. Okay. No, I can't do it. I'm glad I, you and I, we're, we're in, we're in sync about your career. I saw so that's Niagara balls and nut sacks. Okay. That'll do. Yeah. Listen, I, 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 I've been trying to save money in lockdown. Have you? I've been trying to save a few, Bob, you know, I'm not spend too much money. Come up with new ideas. Have you? Uh, no. Uh, well, a number of people have, Ronnie, and I, I've, I've done some research on this this morning because I thought, you know, 10 minutes before he rings, I'll, <laughs> I'll have a flick through the papers. Is this it? Is this it? No, okay. this, isn't the, this isn't the story. Anyway, a number of people... Because <laughs> that's what blew up my mixer, by the way. <laughs> was it? I was, I was my laughing. My mixer got bored. <laughs> but a number of people... <laughs> I've been looking for ways to save money in lockdown, Ronnie. Um, you know, switching broadband providers, using coupons, but nobody, but nobody can beat Francesca Jones, Ronnie. She saved twelve hundred pounds. Guess what? On uh, beans, bread, bread. No, not bread. Uh, think of think of something closer closer to your body. Oh, um, oh, I would have thought soap. Soap, yeah, soap. Well, you've, you've never used soap in your life. No, loo roll. She's been saving money on loo roll. Uh, she's been making her own toilet paper, Ronnie, uh, tearing up her old clothes, which she then uses to wipe herself with. Um, so she has two baskets, uh, one with ready-to-use rags and a second basket filled with used rags. Uh, once a week, she empties the used basket, puts them in the washing machine, 90 minutes spin at 60 degrees Celsius, along with the tea towels and the mm -hmm. towels. Uh, uh, and then she puts them back out again to wipe yourself on instead of toilet roll. So she's cutting up old clothes, wiping bottoms with them, then putting them in the washing machine with the tea towels. I was, what do you think? What do you think about that? Well, you know, I do save money when I want to wash the car, I will mm. get some old t-shirts, you know, I should mm. buff up the car. Um, mm. But it'd be that idea of getting the things mixed up, because you you know if you're going to clean you know, right? I mean, uh, hands, hands. Hmm. No, How far I, would you go? How far would you go to save money? Would you do that? Would you wipe your bottom on your old jumper? You know, I mean, because some things I think when you're saving money, Ronnie, are sacrosanct. I don't know about you. I mean, I don't I, even go two ply with the toilet roll. Don't even go two ply. Oh, no, never I'm, go. I'm, I'm a quilter. Oh, I'm yeah, a, oh, yeah. Oh, I love a quilt. Oh, because yeah. you don't want you don't want the finger through accident, do you? You no, know what I mean. The, you, you, you don't, don't want, want that. You don't want uh, uh, incursions mm. into, into the uh, into mm. the Lord of the Rings. Do Heinz you? Heinz salad cream. I never go lower than Heinz with the salad cream. You know, never do that oh, because yeah. Yeah. You know, there are certain things that are sacrosanct. Little sweet corn better than anybody's sweet corn. Yeah. I would never go below little tin sweet corn. There you know, certain things, sure. but mm. yeah. But in the old days, um, uh, when I was in the SAS, uh, oh. and you're bivouacking, it's leaves, mate. Banana leaves, particularly, are lovely. Uh, yeah. Banana leaves, um, some of the junior ranks uh, as well. If you had a couple of uh, junior ranks there, you would just... When you, say, when you say SAS, do you mean small and succulent? Yeah, it's got to sound with him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I would just... And that way, it was quite, quite cleanliness when you're, when you're undercover, when you're out there in the, in, you know spying on the truth what do you do what do you do when you need a you know you're out right you dug in in iraq somewhere yeah yeah go on uh around the corner from basra yeah. uh you know just up the river uh, and you've 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 been dug in uh -huh. with your mates for you know four or five hours yes. you have a little coffee and we all know what happens when you have a coffee yeah. and you need to do number two poo poo what right. do you do put it in the bag mate 
You can't you leave any, well, you can't leave anything behind. What's Just the go, process though? Talk me through the process here. Well, uh, you get your mate, because uh, you matey up, uh, you get your mate, oh. and, and oh, they no. bring it the bag. Um, oh. And, yeah. Hey, it's team bonding, mate. It's team bonding. You said you don't understand it, but it's, it's team. Oh, talking of that, by the way, talking of. Oh, hey, oh. Hi. <laughs> hey. Hey. Talking, talking of team bonding and that area, I've got to say, huh? uh, hey, Paul, as well, it's a bit smutty today. This one's a bit smutty. But who cares? Well, you started it with the ball stuff. You're, you're talking about jizz and balls. Doing, I mean, come on. Jobs. China is yeah. now requiring COVID-19 tests taken by anal swab. Now, who the hell's anal swab? And what's he <laughs> been taking doing testing? <laughs> anal swab. Oh. It, it, it's not bad it, that the Chinese gave us the bug, but now mm. the, this is going to be introduced. Uh, forget about the uh, kind of uh, up your nose and down your throat. Yeah. Going to do I'll tell you, I, I, I've just Googled anal swab. I can tell you who he works for. Who? Drop them and cough. They're a well-known uh, company oh, right. from from um, Tadchester. Um, they say they say in this anal swab guy, it, mm. his tests are more accurate and will suppress the virus. I would have thought so too. <laughs> if you're going up there, I said, okay, it requires this. Uh, it requires anal swab. Um, and the government's rationale for this is is that there's a data suggesting that parents recovering from the virus will sometimes test negative with a traditional nasal swab. But mm. continue to test positive with samples taken from the lower digestive tract. So, um, you know, Schwab's, he's, he's going to make a fortune, isn't he? But um, I just hope the government have made, uh, put some orders in for this, because if that's the future, I'm in for it. I'm in for it, man. That's yeah, it. yeah. I, I don't want anybody messing about around there, to be honest with you. I've never, oh, I've I, never. I, I don't mind. Never done I that. I, I, you know, <laughs> go for the old uh, prostate um, thing. I, I quite like it. Quite like I, you know, well, it's something to do. You go more than once a year, do you? Yeah, I, you know, they said, Mr. Barber, we test you last week. Yeah, I think there's been a change, though. I think there's been a change. <laughs> Listen, really? talking about the nether regions, this, this, this is this is another link. Here we go. Talk, this isn't it, by the way. Uh, talking about the nether regions, you know, the events industry has been hit hard um, because of because of COVID. And, and fair play, if you work in it and you're listening to this. All we're trying to do is cheer you up. We're not taking the Michael. Uh, but Glastonbury, you know, called off this week, wasn't it? Glastonbury called off. And another major event has gone as well. Just in the last couple of days, Ronnie, I don't know if you saw this, but the, the Dorset knob throwing contest has been called off uh, this year. The tradition of tossing knobs on a Dorset field has been cancelled due to fears that lives could be put, lives could be put at risk by the tossing of knobs. Uh, so, so it's been called off. And it's a shame because um, the Dorset Knob Throne and Frome Valley Food Festival uh, features a competition to hurl the country's, sorry, county's traditional biscuits as far as possible. Because uh, the, the knobs are a biscuit. Oh, I thought you were going to do door knobs. No, no, oh, not door knobs. Right. No, oh. they're a biscuit. Yeah, yeah. And oh. and the event, it's a shame because the event is all encompassing. You know, there's plenty for the kids to do as well at the knob festival. Yes. Um, there's there's live music normally, knob based games such as knob and spoon, <laughs> knob and spoon racing. Uh, Splat the knob uh, is another game there. <laughs> knob oh. duck, which sounds really painful. And pin the knob on the CERN Abbas giant is another. And then players also battle to eat as many knobs as possible in record time. Oh, so uh, it's a shame those games are not taking place, yeah, isn't it? You know, it's, it is very sad that the COVID has taken that away from me. Oh, that's, yeah. I have to say, other biscuits we could uh, binge on. I would go with uh, uh, custard creams. Mm. Creams, mm. that would be... Um, the Jaffa I, cake, the Jaffa cake for me is oh, is the uh, yeah. whether it's a biscuit or a cake, and I know there's a lot of consternation about it, but you know the Jaffa cake, you can't have one; it's impossible. No, I, and I'm surprised nobody's made. You know, Topper Run have a corner market uh, for the the uh, one, and you can get three foot of. Uh, well, no, listen, no, 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 no. Topper Run have only cornered one market. Okay. And that is the market of triangular chocolate. Yeah, yeah, that that's the only market why, they've got. Why has nobody ever made a massive Jaffa cake though? You know they do these big paellas. Paella. Yeah. Paella. Yeah. Paella. Yeah. Why can't somebody make a massive one and we can have a joint nibble at a Jaffa cake? Or you could dive into the central oh. orangey bit. But it's you not know, orange. Just it's yeah. that's, that's not orange, the middle bit. I don't be silly. 
No, it's not orange. This was, this, you know, this has been a, no, it's, it's a peach jam. I've never heard anything so stupid in all my yeah, life. And you've said some stupid shit, but that is crap. Stupid Come shit. on. I Sorry, to, did I swear then? Yeah, <laughs> on sewage FM. Stupid shit, did overnight. Brilliant guy. But, so, so, but peach. It's, it's not, a, you know, and you know the truth. You've done this phone in before. It's a peach jam. It's a no. peach jam. Well, I, I'm, I want my money back. I want my money. Listen, do you want some knob facts? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, here's some facts about the knob uh, for you, Ronnie, here. Well, uh, I've got, got to say this. What? You listen to the Total BS uh, podcast. Oh, ho, ho, ho. it's 10.15, time for travel. Uh, now, knobs have been made by Moors of Morecambe Lake for 150 years, Ronnie. Get away. That's yes. a lot Originally, of yeah, that's yeah. a lot of Originally, knobs were made from leftover bread dough with added butter and sugar, hand-rolled and left to dry in the dying heat of the oven. The dying heat? Okay. Dying. So it's my okay. pronunciation. Yorkshire yeah, yeah. coming through there for a second. Oh, uh, it's thought the, the, the knob name comes from the hand-sewn Dorset knob buttons that were also made locally. And knobs eaten with blue Vinnie cheese, uh, dipped in tea or cider or taken with honey and cream. That's the way to have them. And it's known locally as thunder and lightning, which is apparently nice for your knobs. Oh, well, I've t I'm taking that. Blue Vinny cheese. I do like the sound of that. On the knobs, yes. Yeah, blue Vinny cheese. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that mm -hmm. is finally, we might have found something in uh, in uh, cahoots together. Uh, mm. Something that we share is, is the love of the Jaffa. Uh, the Jaffa cake. It's, you know, it's, well, I, th I think it's a universal love. It's not like Marmite. You know, there's nobody out there that doesn't love a Jaffa cake. I can't believe there's anybody out there that doesn't love a Jaffa cake. And if they, if they don't, I, I wouldn't give them a vaccination, to be honest. I wouldn't. Okay. Um, no, no um, well, we are kind of down nethers at the moment. Oh, no, I've got, an, I've got a clean one for you. Do you want oh, a clean thankfully. Or a, or mm. a dirty one? I'll give you no, a... I'd like a clean one. I think the listeners need a break from knobs and you know, yeah. anal and, and balls. Okay, um, here we go then. Let's get rid of that. Um, oh, it's taking a while. Go on. Well, truth. There's a new remedy for hair loss. I thought of you right away with this. Oh, thanks. But you'll need a strong stomach for it, Mr. Stainton. Um, Why? Right, because you use fermented cabbage. Fermented cabbage, you run it, it, it revives your follicles. And I know oh, you. Sounds, sounds German to me. Uh, yeah. Eating kimchi, which is South <laughs> Korean fermented cabbage, could be a drug free way to keep you locked. That's a good study. Um, scientists at Dan Cook University, remember Dan Cook University in Seoul? Did That's you? not a proper university. If it's called Dan Cook, it's not. It's not I, who's, I, who's Dan Cook? I don't know. He, I, I, he went to the same place as Eno Swab, as far as I know. <laughs> um, the investigated claims that kimchi boosted hair growth by helping blood vessels dilate and creating blood flow to the scalp. It's the blood flow to the scalp is the issue, uh, Paul. Yeah. We need, mm. to get, we need to get your blood going up there. Um, mm. and, well, and I, I could do the Boris thing and just get people to hang me upside down, perhaps. That's, that's it, the way to go. It's a very comprehensive study I'll have you know as well before you start having a go. They studied 23 men with hair loss, so it's comprehensive. <laughs> 23. <laughs> that's like one of them, that's like one of them surveys on telly for hair products, isn't it? Where they say 98% of ladies said that their face didn't burn off when they used this shampoo. And then you look at the bottom, and there's a study of 88 people. Yeah. <laughs> Each of these 23 men was told to drink a small bottle of liquidized kimchi before breakfast and at bedtime. After a month, the average uh, number of hairs have risen from 85% square centimetre scalp to 90. <laughs> That's in, and in four months, 92. I'm not rubbing my head with cabbage for anybody. Oh, you I'm drink just... it. You drink it, Paul. There's no uh, rubbing. That's the joy of it. The joy of the, the rub's not there. Listen, when I go to the supermarket, you know, you, you get your milk, yes. you get your orange juice, you know, maybe the odd bottle of wine. Nowhere in the supermarket have I ever seen a bottle of cabbage juice for drinking. And if I did see that, it wouldn't go in the basket. Kimchi, 23 men. So nah. the, the evidence, you know that advert for um, a caffeine shampoo. Have you ever tried that German caffeine shampoo? No, it's German. All right. Oh, God. Okay. Even with even with shampoo, you're xenophobic. Oh, oh yeah, I I, I don't uh, don't discriminate. Certainly oh. not. All right. <clears throat> but Dan, what was it? Dan Cook University. Dan Cook University in Seoul. 
It just sounds like some bloke off the council estate has just decided <laughs> to <agree>. set <laughs> to, to get nine grand a year off a load of dubious teenagers, yeah. spotty freaks, uh, and set up hair loss. Yeah. yeah, I've got university. I'm done. Ted Baker. It's the Ted Baker University. Yeah, yeah, it's fashion. We do fashion, Ted Baker. I'm not that Ted Baker. I'm from I'm from Somerset. Just rubbish. <laughs> How would you say Ted Baker in the Somerset? Ted Baker. Ted Baker. <laughs> oh, are Ted Baker. And you can imagine in Somerset, if Ted Baker from Somerset opened a university, his family would be disappointed in him because they'd want him to carry on the family side of business. Yes, yes. <laughs> why did you Why did you go and open that university out there? You should have carried on with the cider. Yeah, exactly. Now, listen, oh, listen. I, I don't know if you've seen this this week, but I think I've got a business opportunity for us. <gasps> yes, finally, some money. You know, you know, Boris announced yesterday that all these, you know, British expats who are on the beach in Dubai telling us how to ride a camel and inspiring us, you know, them selfish... Yeah. Uh, them them lot um when they come back they're gonna have to quarantine in quarantine hotels next to the airport for 10 nice. nights nice. at their own expense now <clears throat> business opportunity good boy good boy i've already got myself 16 old porter cabins from a school that's closed at the minute i've got a job lot of beds i borrowed from a premier inn that isn't open and a thousand pizzas from pizza express because it's the only food that fits underneath the door you know when you lock them in it's the only Never. thing that goes into the So we could set up our own quarantine hotel. I've even been offered a CCTV system from Debenhams. They don't need it anymore. No. Well, I like the sound of that. I do mm. like the sound of that. And how inspiring this is for young entrepreneurs to hear you thinking about mm. the nitty gritty of your ideas. The fact yeah. that you thought about the, the, the height of the <coughs> floor the, and you know, the food you can slip under there. Well, you've, you, you're limited, aren't you, with the door? Because, I mean, you don't want them coming out and giving you it. So you lock them in, bolt them in, you know, bits of wood across the door and a bit of red paint with an X. And then you're slipping the food under the door. Pizza, garlic, bread, slices of cheese. That's about it. And that's a good diet, I think, for 10 days. It's funny, because you and I have been in BBC quarantine, haven't we? For, uh, yeah. Well, I certainly have been for uh, another year, nearly a year now. Is it three, three years? years for me. Three years. I, I've, I, I've been in BBC quarantine. Yeah. I think you're free from any BBC disease. Now, I think I think you should be let out. I think you should. Yeah. Be. But um, I've already had bookings for the hotel. I don't know if you start. I've already had bookings from Brazil. Right. Uh, from Chile and Cape Verde, uh, and at the minute I've got four AA stars. I would have had five, but I couldn't get hold of the woman from Misery to take care of the escapees. So oh. when, once once I've got her on, you know, with the the blocks and the yeah. hammer, for anybody that tries to escape, I think we'll get five AA stars. I've been told. I love it. Mm. I love it. Um, Paul, I'm going to give a public warning. Uh, if everybody is, oh. uh, you know, as we uh, inform and entertain and educate. We do one of those. Doctors warning over TikTok. That's a thing, Paul. The youngsters are doing. They're filming themselves, sh very short videos, and putting on the interweb. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, I, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. No, some of it. Um, but doctors warning over TikTok beauty craze that uses erection cream to make lips bigger. Oh. <laughs> uh, med medics are warning people not to try the new beauty hack after a TikTok video where influencer. He's an influencer, Jerry Mao. Jerry Miles and influenced you. Have you had he influenced you, Jerry? Yeah, Jerry. Did he did he go to Dan Cook University? I think he did. Yeah. He, he likes to smother his lips with erection cream. Uh, <laughs> and apparently it's been viewed 3.5 million times. because uh, oh, I don't know about you, I like a stiff upper lip myself. Um, yeah. But doctors are at stake and they're saying um it's for a puffed up pout. Do you <laughs> have you <laughs> Have you ever wanted a puffed up pout then, Paul? Is, is that something well, that's then. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Um No, no, and I don't like the idea. I don't mind a stiff upper lip because that's traditionally British, but a stiff lower lip as well. And what about your tongue? You don't want your tongue protruding through your lips. If you get a bit on your tongue, you can have, you can have a bulbous tongue, aren't you? Come on. Um, bulbous tongue as well. That's another one. Uh, yeah, but it, it says here, he says it says it kind of tingle. It's not terrible, but we'll see. And yeah. there's, there's a picture of it in the Twitter smear, and it, it, it <coughs> makes the lips come really up nicely. Uh, it take, it's been five minutes, and they do look bigger. And to be fair, Paul, the, these lips have gone bigger as well. Mm, but why? This is what I don't get with all these people that, <clears throat> that have the injections in the lips. You know, these ladies that look like 
you know, that you could stick them on a window and they'd stick for quite a while yeah. by their lips. Why do they have these injections to make themselves look so ridiculous? And then people that have got big buttocks, you know, they have injections yeah. in their buttocks. They just look, they look deformed. Years ago, these people would have been rounded up and put in special hospitals. Now they're on, they're on TikTok influencing the youth of today and, and encouraging others to look completely ridiculous and slightly deranged. What do you think of this? As an idea, mm. you've got people who have got too much, uh, you know, uh, of the you know the, the fatty stuff. Botox. Pe- yeah. But, well, you want well people who have got big butts. I uh, say. So, yeah. Um, and you get people who want bigger butts. Couldn't we just connect them both up, in a one-way mm. sort of tube, and all the people who want extra both uh, extra you know width or girth on your buttocks. Mm-hmm. We just transfer it across. The one that's losing it, her bum's gone down. She's happier. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do it for other things. People who's, um, you know, you could take out the, uh, have you ever seen um, real body fat? Oh, it's awful. Yeah, it's disgusting. Horrible. But I think, there's, I, think, I think there's already a place. There's a university that can go and do that, these people. Where, we could where's put, that now? Oh, it's, it's in um, Bradford, at Seymour Butts University. Is and it? um Right. Yeah, and if we can, we could put the people that have got big butts and small butts together at Seymour Butts, and uh, they could learn to, they could learn together. Well, I really am crossing the ball into the net, into the box for you today, aren't I? Aren't I? Hey, he's like, he's like more and wise. You're just opening the door, and I'm just shutting it and, gently uh, behind and you. It would be a shame not to talk about the classic Viagra joke: um, the man that swallowed a Viagra, mm-hmm. uh, got it stuck in his throat, and he's got a stiff neck. Uh, right? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Let's not do that. Right. Now, listen, Ronnie. Yes. <clears throat> this is it. Uh, we're, we're all, <clears throat> all of us. Hang on. I'm just going to get, <clears throat> I just want to get comfortable. <clears throat> oh, okay. And I'll get my tea out as well. Are you all right? Are you yes. sorted? <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> all of us, Ronnie, are doing our bit for Britain, aren't we? We're not going out. We're not getting our nails and hair done. Uh, we're having to go without life's usual niceties. We're doing nothing, doing nothing, Ronnie, yeah. so that this great nation may prosper once again. That's us. That's us. Yeah. Well, well, but that is not, that is not the case with 31 metropolitan police officers. No. Fined for having their hair cut by a professional barber at Bethnal Green Police Station on Sunday, the 17th of January. That's outrageous. Mm. We're doing our bit. Yeah, but they they're not. Um, I'm just going to say something here. Maybe mm-hmm. it's so they can get their policemen's helmets to fit. It, you know. No, it's not, Ronnie. It's selfishness. Oh. It's selfishness. It's vanity. I mean, who cares if you've got hair coming down the side of your face or your fringe is over your eyes? You're you know, it's, we're all living like this at the minute. I mean, look at Julie Howell, councillor in Peterborough. Yeah. She's a mess. She's a wreck. She I looks, looks, she's, she looks terrible. nice in her, her video. And her, you know, I think that's a bit unkind. But I her, hair, her hair has gone so long, she looks like deputy dog. You can't even see her ears. Wow. You know, she's, she's making that sort of sacrifice for us. So well, that... So that we may stay safe. And she's not the only one, Ronnie. You know, we're all doing it. Who else then, Paul? Who else is doing it then? No, no, that wasn't the cue. No, many, many of us. (laughs) Many of us. But not these policemen, Ronnie. Not these 31 selfish officers. But a full investigation has now taken place uh, about bringing the barber in to cut their hair. They've combed the place for clues as to who... Yeah. brought the barbers in, yes. they've, taken, they've taken fingerprints, hair samples and DNA, yes. all the people involved have been questioned at length, uh, and even those, <laughs> even those on the fringes, Roddy. Oh, go on, son, go on, my son, go on, my son. I've lost where I am. Even those on the fringes, Ronnie, yes. have been interrogated by Bob, Bob, the lead detective, they couldn't afford Sherlock Combs. Right. Uh, anyway. <laughs> in the end, yes. in the end, in the end, Ronnie, yes. three officers have been found guilty of organising this disgraceful haircutting event. Those officers, Officer Short, 
back and sides. Oh, they've all. <laughs> they've. They've all. <laughs> they've all been given the hairdryer treatment, Ronnie, and a severe parting of ways is anticipated. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey! Listen, that was a good one. Go on, that's a lot. Thank you. That is. <laughs> I've, I've had a quiet week, as Just, you can probably tell. No, you could have more quiet weeks, mate. That was actually a punchline. Thank you. A thank parting you. of ways. A yeah, part parting of the ways. Yeah. Short yeah, back. Sure. You're going to give me three hundred thousand pounds, mate. I would never have got short back inside. Says the cop. <laughs> magnificent. Magn no, seriously, that is thank magnificent. You. Oh, yeah, I mean, your, quarant your BBC quarantine must be ready to be on. Yeah, well, you would have, I mean, if not, I'm going to do a Therese coffee and turn the screen off. I'm just going to turn no, it off. Yeah, yeah. Anybody for coffee? Because she oh, did. She did. How dare she? How dare she? How dare she treat yeah. us like that? And then accuse the, 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 the population of being old and fat, you know. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's rich yeah. coming from Theresa, isn't it? Yeah. You know, large greenhouse throwing boulders. Come on. Solid bar. <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, that, that is magnificent today. We've done without music, and we apologize to you, but you don't listen to the, us for music. No, no. I like playing the music, uh, but of course, I can't the mixer with my buttons on it and everything. Yeah, oh, on, but uh, that's magnificent. Now, we have a, a, a can I edit this video? Can I edit the video? Um, so that you know, can, why? Why would you? Because I, I, I want to just maybe can I Photoshop it? Just warts and all. Put the video. We'll put the podcast out. So we'll double our bubble here. We'll put the podcast out. Get all the listeners, and then put the video out like three days later. All the warts, all the all, all the uncut stuff. You know, like when I do that to you. All that sort of stuff. You know, leave it in. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got to, listen, I've got to go. I've got to go. I'm writing a book. I don't know if I told you. I'm writing a book, so I, I need to crack on. I'm writing a book. Kids have more fun in the eighties. I'm going to oh, yeah, crack so on with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because you are genuinely thinking about writing the book. I am. I am genuinely thinking about it. I've got my chapters: fashion, TV, fun and games, music, food, and sex. Uh, and I've, I've what I've done is. What I've done is I've invited people on social media to give me all their memories of the eighties. Then I can just copy and paste and get the money coming in. So uh, watch out for it. Kids have more fun in the 80s. Knock door, run, Adam, the ants, Kirby. We were there. Mm. Shakespeare used to do that all the time, to be fair. I, you mm. know, start to offer the question, you know, to be or not to be, and they'd go, oh, tweet me what you think the next line yeah. should be. A yeah. whole piece of every bloody poem he ever wrote, somebody else wrote it for him. And do you know what? If it goes well, I've got some other books lined up. What? Kids had more fun in the 70s. <gasps> yeah. Is Clever. Again, I just rip off people that follow me on social media and copy and paste. And then the other book in the trilogy, Kids Have More Fun in the 60s. Yeah. Oh. And th it stops there because obviously before that they were down mines or knocking about with Fagin and his mob. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I get mm. that. Mm. Well, well, well done. That's you're inspiring Thanks. you're inspiring a lot of entrepreneurs. Uh where you're you're your your uh, peeks under the door thing, brilliant, and Thank write you. books by just copying. Some people call it plagiarism. Nah. It's creative writing by somebody mm. else. No, I'll use I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take their words and then use different ones and jumble them up a bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now that's what that's what Oasis did with their their, their songs, isn't it? They took took Beatles records and just jumbled the you know notes up a bit. You can't do yeah. that. That's um that's that's terrible. Come on, don't look back in anger. Come you, on. You'll uh, you'll get a phone call from Ian. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. What did you say? Hi. Podcast. Uh, Baby. Um, we're Baby. Still... Anyway, Sorry. We're still waiting for um, a message to be left on the Anchor FM. Uh, with anybody who's got feature ideas for the uh, the podcast, anybody, mm. um, uh, and any ideas you've got comedy wise as well. You know. Well, Chris Cullum's been on. Chris Cullum what? sent me a message. What did he say? He he, he he thinks you've got a business on the go on the side, a biscuit oh, business. I... Is it true? What's well, I, well I, he, he claims you you own a, a brand of biscuits. What um, shorties? Right, that's it. Goodbye, everybody. Say goodbye, everybody. I've got to go. So there's a pizza just been slipped under the door. <laughs> <laughs>